You want to drop kick him? Ooh, baseball slide. And it was close. <laughs> Enjoying my reactions, but you don't feel like waiting a week for the next upload? That's cool, because I got you covered. Chances are, by the time you watch this show on YouTube, I'll already have the full seasons available over on Patreon in their complete unedited glory. All you gotta do is become a tier 2 patron. And if you just so happen to be a viewer who wants to request things from me, such as movies and shows, then you can take your loyalty even further by becoming a tier 3 patron. The ball is in your court, and I'm completely at your service. So take advantage of these opportunities now. Yo, what's going on you guys? This is your boy RBG, aka The Random Black Gamer, here with me, myself, and I on the ones and twos, and this is We Ain't Seen The Reactions, the place where I react to everything I ain't never seen. And if you've read by the title, you already know what time it is. It's time to get our investigation on with some more Detective Conan reaction, or case closed reaction, as they like to call it over here in the West. Yes, man, last time we was hitting all kind of piano keys because we were trying to uh, solve this mystery revolving around this dead, famous piano player by the name of Aso Keiji. Uh, apparently, what we thought, Keiji sent a letter over to uh, Kogoro telling him that he needs to come over to this island and investigate. But they came to the realization that this guy, Keiji, he's been dead for 12 years. So we already have a big mystery on our hands. Apparently, this guy killed his family in a fire while playing Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. And there was so much stuff going on with that, but something's not quite lining up. In the meantime, we meet some primetime players in the form of these government officials who are trying to take place in this big political thing, you know, uh, I guess revolving around a vote, you know, uh, or a campaign, if you can call it that. I don't know all the minutiae details, especially when it comes to politics, but it was very much a political affair. And you could just tell that these guys were involved in some form or fashion, you know, but I wasn't just going to, you know, uh, overcook my grits before I allowed them to simmer, you know, which you should always take into account that just because you think something happened doesn't mean that's how it's gonna happen, you know, or how it happened in the first place. Um, as it turns out, you know, we saw all these people getting killed and stuff like that. And every time the killer would kill each one of these political party members, they would leave like a certain, um, musical notes and stuff like in cryptic form you know so you could decipher what they were and it would give like times and date or uh, i don't even want to say dates but i don't like something along those lines it would just give out clues that conan would have to kind of pick apart to discover who it was now i originally thought that it was the guy that was uh you know warning everybody about the piano that yeah you want to stay away from that piano because it's cursed and every time moonlight's another place somebody ends up dead but as it turns out, that guy was essentially a drug smuggler and he would always come up in the room and, where the piano was and play some drugs under this little secret department that they had under there. So yeah, just go ahead and X him out. We uh, we meet this girl named Asai Nar uh, Narumi who's like a doctor and I guess a coroner who always inspects the bodies. And I thought she was just a good gal, you know, but usually when it comes to the least suspecting person, they're most likely the culprit. And that's what it was because as it turns out, KG actually had a son. Yeah, uh, and apparently the people involved in that political party, they were doing business with um, KG. They had like a whole drug scandal going on and he decided to pull out. So they killed him by burning his house down and killing his family with him, not realizing that KG had a son named Seiji. But Seiji had some work done, <laughs> if I could say that, you know. So that was one of the reasons why it was least suspecting, you know, because it's a woman and they didn't realize that this woman was actually his son. So it was a pretty cool episode, man. It was like a two-parter in one type of deal. So I guess I could just count that as episode 11. So yeah, man. Keep it coming, man. Um, we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to go ahead and jump into this next episode, which is episode 12, titled Ayumi Chen's Abduction. So let's go ahead and see how this is going to go, man. Let's see how uh, Ayumi is going to get abducted, unfortunately. Here we go. <laughs> right, I gotta play kitty games with you assholes. So I got two guys that are envious of me and a girl that's fixated on me. Nice. Nice. 
So I have to get rid of him anyway. Hide and go seek. <laughs> His expression says it all. He is not feeling this shit, bro. Say, oh man, you seen a girl? Oh wow, he's gonna. A peephole, really? <laughs> Uh oh, that's how it's gonna start, huh? That's how Ayumi is gonna get caught up in this shit. You should be worried. This fucking episode is named after you. Aww. No, we are not. My 18-year-old brain cannot process this shit. Shut up, nigga. She blew my cover. Has this old man not awakened up yet? A broken antenna. You better not hide in that fucking trunk. God damn it. Let's go. <laughs> right? You look like a botched girl, brother, with that shit on. Why? Right? I don't care for her like that, butthead. I mean, isn't it obvious? <laughs> wow. Bruh. I hope she didn't jump in that trunk. Both of these guys are simps. Simps, man. <laughs> right? This little love triangle that they got going on. Are you sleeping or something? What the fuck is... God, I can't stand kids. What? Oh, stupid. What was that money? Wow. A hundred million? How many burgers I could buy with that? That's that drug money right there, man. That's that cocaine. Grilled eel. I always wanted to try some of that. <laughs> Must be the radio. What if that's like a head or something? No! <gasps> Is that a little girl's head? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god, man. How far are they going to take it with this brutal shit, yo? I was not suspecting that. I hope that's a fake. She going to pass out from this shit.
<laughs> Ooh. Girl, you got the devil's luck because that shit got my fucking heart rate going up. What? What's so funny? Is she lost her fucking mind? Okay, but how does that correlate to what's going on now? You're in a fucking trunk with a dead body or a head. If I'm not mistaken, he used this up in the loop in the third crossover. Solar power, so as long as there's some sun, it'll be alright, but it's dawn now. It's evening time. Get your ass off my fucking board, bro. Y'all just want to get brownie points. Yeah, y'all want some other shit, man. I'm really trying to save a life here, but y'all just trying to score with this girl. Trying to be they be her boyfriend. Wow. Okay, so that gives you enough time to catch up at least. Exactly. How is this going to work, man? Is going to be able to support all that weight? Ooh. We got this, Ayumi. We coming for you, baby girl. But guys, let's take a quick pause for the cause because... Uh, Yumi's life is in the very, like, it's, it's in danger, you know, there's no other way of putting that. She's very much in danger, and boy, I see now that they are not going to pull any punches, even when it comes to kids. I was not expecting to see an adolescent child severed head up in the trunk of these crazy guys' car. Um, especially, you know, I, I just try to wrap my mind around the fact that they allowed the kids to bear witness to these heinous acts of murder and stuff like that where they had to see the dead bodies like any other characters would be traumatized especially considering the fact that these are like these episodes are in a thousand so there's like no telling how many bodies they are bared witness to man so i i continue to actually feel empathetic for these characters in that sense um it looks like the professor, you know, he continues to do what he do and um, actually fit my boy Conan with some better technology that's going to actually help him um, solve investigations. And now it seems like we have something that's really going to be beneficial to us during these chase sequences that I'm pretty sure there are going to be plenty of. And that's in the form of this super fast jet skateboard, you know, so I can't, you know, I can't wait to see how this is going to play out. As I mentioned during the reaction, I did get a chance to watch the crossover special between Detective Conan and Lupin the Third, and if I recall, he used this skateboard on a bridge. Like he was chasing Lupin up in his yellow Fiat, and he used it, uh, you know, he was skating on a fucking bridge, which I thought was awesome, you know. He, he seems like he gets a lot of air with this thing, so yeah, this is really going to actually crank up the um, the action level to insane levels, so yeah. But anyways, let's go ahead and see how he's going to be able to catch up with these guys, because as it's been stated, there's a lot of heavy traffic, and usually when there's heavy traffic, you tend to get slowed down, so that should definitely give him enough time to cover a lot of distance and get closer to them. But... Without further ado, let's jump right back into it. <laughs> or the detective or the inspector. Maguri. Really? <laughs> mm. What? Oh, she didn't get quiet. Did they discover her or is her signal going? Oh, of course. 
That's a pretty good communicator for that, though. <laughs> no, you idiots. Dumbass. Shit. You need to update your fucking service. That's why I ain't say shit to you. Yo, 5G going out. Roaring? Are they on a fucking race car track? <laughs> really? So surf's up? Okay. <laughs> That's got to be a fun ride to have. Wow, not the dog being in the pose. So where is that at? Right around the... Okay, is that them? It just passed by you, bro. <laughs> what you gonna do with that can? On your ass like lemongrass, let's go! Hey, pass out already. You've been due for it. Oh no! The sun, bro. Why would he make it solar power? You could have had at least a built in battery as well. What? What are you gonna do? <laughs> what the fuck? What is that gonna do? The fuck off my car! Oh! This is crazy. I knew the action. Hey! <laughs> Come on, man. That poor guy just wanted to deliver some soba, man. Hey! Come on, man. Don't let go. Let's go, Gito! You got the shit. Hurry up and retrieve her. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's time to kick it. <laughs> Heads up. No, you're going to be knocked out. Please tell me that's not a real head. That's the only thing I want to know. Oh, wow. So what are you guys, movie directors or something? <laughs> wow. So I was wondering, man. Leave it to the Brat Pack over here. I mean, that still doesn't excuse the fact that you were trying to kill these kids by speeding up. Oh, wow. <laughs> Broken neck, are you serious? Poor guy, man. Look at his face. He'll never be able to work in this industry again because of you assholes. <laughs> Alright, he's back at it. Did he get a neck brace? Oh, it's Conan. That's hilarious. <laughs> I 
Really? That is hilarious. Alright guys, so this right here was essentially a fun and games episode, man. Um, Ayumi ends up getting kidnapped and it's up to the Brat Pack to come to the rescue as, um, you know, I suspected it would be this way because anytime they're involved, you know, it's never anything serious unless they end up getting kidnapped for real, which we already saw in one of the previous episodes that they got kidnapped by these mobsters that had this gold they were trying to go after. Um, but it's still cool to see the dynamic of these characters because we see that, you know, they like certain things, you know, and that, that's what I enjoy. You know, you have uh, Genta who has a crush, you know what I'm saying, a major crush on Ayumi. And you also have Mitsuhiko who has a major crush as well. And they always try to one up each other, especially Conan, because I think they suspect that um, Ayumi has a crush on him the most because he is the most talented out of the bunch, which unbeknownst to them, they aren't aware of his crazy talent because of the fact that he's actually a high schooler in a elementary schooler's body. So, you know, that's pretty much, you know, a telltale sign right there. But they don't know that. And he continues to have to um, play down his intellect to match theirs, you know, because he's a kid at the end of the day. And he has to play all these stupid kid games. Um, I thought I'd be tired of them, but they are growing on me, you know. They contribute stuff, too, to these mysteries. They do their thing. They're a little above average when it comes to other kids their age. So, yeah. Um, I don't know what else to add to this. It's just a fun episode with a lot of comedic timing to it. You know, I was laughing a lot, so... You know, uh, I guess I'll give it an A+. Uh, <laughs> really enjoyed that. But anyways, let's go ahead and get back into it with this next episode, which is going to be episode 13 titled, The Bizarre Manhunt Murder. Here we go. Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> Detective. Let's get it. <laughs> right. Criminal pursuit glasses. Which button? Oh, what the fuck does this do? Oh, nice. Damn. What if he's one of the murderers? <laughs> Let me guess your cat's name is Salem. Oh, Kai. Okay, Kai Sinato. Okay, Mr. Wiggles, Sniggles, and Giggles. Guy loves him some cats. She wearing that dress. Really? You gonna touch her butt? Don't do that. Are oh, you fucking kidding me? Somebody's getting smacked upside the head. God damn it! Does it come off? Oh shit! The waterworks. Damn! I hate this four. Nobody's seen him. So he was a crazy cat guy. A, a very much a recluse. What? What? Wow, so he's at a horse race. Or a horse rally race. Gonna take my shit. Well, y'all love taking credit from this kid, man. It's gonna be like finding a needle in a haystack. There you go. No. He just don't want nobody to know that he's a 
bad gambler that loses a lot of fucking money. And who is this? Is this her dad? Oh, Look at that. Right, she got lipstick on and everything. Now she all done up. That ain't her daddy. Ain't no girl gonna hold her daddy like that. I thought she looked different. No, nah, it'll never be that easy. Who is the suspicious motherfucker right here? Somebody in home they self. Is that dad? Oh my god. Damn. Mm. Oh, okay. So he yeah, already been dead. He didn't. He ain't got no daughter for real. <laughs> oh yeah, you can still find her. So that little mistake just so happened to be the perfect little strategy. Yeah, she definitely alive. She probably twerking at the club. Let me go find this bitch. So she liked to gamble too. Better hurry up. Damn. We just see these Peter Griffin pants on. Oh my god. It's Quagmire's daddy. Oh shit. What you trying to say? I don't belong here? Why are people so harsh to kids? Yeah, why does this nigga keep on peeping around corners? Who is this dude? I know. What? Okay. We rolling like that? Yeah, beat his ass. No take off running either with that Inspector Jack. No. Got something for your ass. Kick the window out. <laughs> what are you then? Are you an inspector? Alright. He's a detective. <laughs> it's like, hey man, your daughter kind of fine. I ain't know what to do. Wow, he got those Zenigata eyelashes. That's hilarious. <laughs> Them anime girl eyes. Mm. Wow, so was that her uncle? Six foot three, okay? Why would you do that? Oh shit. I hope that ain't the case. 
But guys, let's take a quick pause for the cause. Uh, Masumi, man, um, there's a chance that she could be dead if, you know, she isn't already. Uh, yeah, Masami, she had her dad that she was looking for all this time. And come to find out, this guy, he has been taking probably all kinds of bets up in these fucking um, horse races and stuff. We know how that goes. Like, you lose a lot of money if you don't pick the right horse, you know. So, ain't no telling how much debt this guy done racked up. And he probably owe a lot of people money. And that's that's most likely why he got killed the way he got killed. Um, I don't know. It's so fucking suspicious, though, because at first when we meet this girl, she's dressed modestly. Actually, you know, her age. But... The next time we see her, she looks like a woman of the night. You know, she got her fucking mascara on, lipstick all done up good and stuff. And the way she clinging to this man's arm, it doesn't give off dad-daughter vibes. It gives off sugar daddy, sugar baby vibes, <laughs> if, I, if that makes any sense. So, ain't no telling what's going on. You know, like I say, something in the milk ain't clean at all. You know, I'm not finna overcook my grits before I let them simmer. So, um, we gonna figure out who is the real culprit in this situation. You know, like, who really killed this guy? Because it's like all the other things are pointing to this other dude, too, who is essentially um, the brother or something to this dude. Uh, we saw him kick out um, Conan and, you know... I guess go back to his business in this pachinko place that he's in. I don't know if that's his establishment or what, but we're going to figure it out, man. So far, so good. The mystery is there, and I don't know who the main culprit is. I don't know how they're going to swerve us for this episode, but like, I'm going to go ahead and place all my bets on this girl, Masami. So, yeah. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump back into it, shall we? Hurry up, hurry up, motherfuckers. Uh-oh. Is this the same chick again? Why do you have makeup? Who is this? Okay, it's a chauffeur or whatever. Uh-oh, somebody's dead. Of course. Oh, wow, he has the tracker watch. What the fuck? Masami, I, I, I know she gotta be the culprit. Mm, one of y'all wanted the money all to yourself. Rehearse, really? Of course. He killed him, and the girl probably killed him as well. Mm -hmm. She had to be. Look at her. She's for the fucking streets. Was that her? Uh-huh. I know. I thought she looked familiar. She over here dressed up like Carmen San Diego. The hell, Bryn? Knock his ass out. <laughs> Step on it. Who is this? Damn. Damn. A lot of backstabbing going on here. You think you can just walk away, bitch? Uh-oh. Damn. I'm pretty sure he has means of finding out. Uh-oh, time to kick it. What the fuck is that? 
Yeah, did he take that away from you? Did he take the little nipple transmitter ring? <laughs> Damn. So y'all still don't want to jail. I don't care if you didn't kill anybody. Okay. Spill it, bitch. Oh, shit. He's back up. You gonna do ricochet? <laughs> Bruh. This man has severe brain damage. He ain't gonna be able to say a word if he's interrogated. <laughs> <laughs> Get all that dinero. Really? This guy's stock keeps going up more and more because of Conan. Alright guys, so that right there was episode 13 titled The Strange Person Finding Murder Case. Um, yeah, like I had a nagging suspicion that the girl had something to do with it, but she wasn't the actual culprit when it came to killing these people. That was all largely due in part to this guy. You know, like, um, this dude, Okita, you know, like, he had a plan, he wanted to get the money for himself, but he was scouting out all these people to do the dirty work, and then he was gonna, um, you know, just kill them off one by one, which he was able to do through certain little tactics here and there. Um, it was cool seeing how they were able to deduce that, you know, um, especially with the girl, Masami. It's like every time she appeared on the screen, I knew it was her. Like even with all the different drastic changes to her appearance, particularly with her makeup and her hair and her different like ensembles of uh, outfits that she had on. I was like, why does that look like her? She's right there. She ain't fooling nobody, man. You know, even if she dressed like Carmen San Diego, don't mean she Carmen San Diego. She is easy to, to spot out like a fake three dollar bill man so uh yeah that was one of the more easier cases for me to kind of deduce even though they had like a certain spin on it revolving around the real mastermind at hand which is the guy okita um so yeah i ain't gonna lie some of the things that conan does with these damn shoes is really hilarious because for some reason these shoes have the ability to kick something so hard to where it bounces off of a steel surface or a hard surface and knock the person upside his head. So, um, I know he's a soccer um, soccer prodigy. You know, he's very talented when it comes to that. But he also has to be a mastermind at knowing the trajectory and the way something is going to impact off of a um, surface to you know hit his targets. Um, so yeah, like that's that's one of the more interesting concepts of it. Or the more wackier concepts of the show that we see. Um, that whole James Bond element that they have. But I'm enjoying it, man. I'm enjoying it. Overall, I would give this episode an S. Uh, you know, like I say, even though you can see it coming a mile away, even Ray Charles could see it. It was still fun to see how it was orchestrated. But that's going to do it for us today, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this reaction because, as always, I have a blast reacting to these things with you and for you. You got to believe me, man. <laughs> you got to believe me. But, you know, if there's anything that I may have missed or gotten misconstrued, by all, all means, provide the proper context in the comment section below without spoiling me on things I need to know in the future. 
But once again, this is your boy RBG, aka the Random Black Gamer. We ain't seen the reactions. I'll catch you guys on the next reaction to Detective Conan. Peace.